Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel in one of the weirdest weeks in memory as a Chelsea fan. We've gone from wanting to sack a manager at the beginning of the week to accepting that we're not going to sack a manager to now spanners are being thrown into the works with emergency meetings being held which as a Chelsea fan who likes to read news, see gossip and then dissect it in my own manner and give my opinions on it, this leads me to a multitude of questions once again, but questions that I do feel as though I have some general answers in the progressive sense too. I can't believe it's got to this point now where I'm being happy to be progressively voicing my acceptance of certain manoeuvres that Chelsea are taking to manoeuvre out of said situation, which is the most dire run of form that I think we've been in, statistically, in my lifetime. Since I was a wee little baby fitting in the palm of your wee hand, I think this is as bad as it's been. Over the course of the last few days, we've been looking over the, the horrible affair, which was Stamford Bridge for Chelsea nil, Southampton 1, last weekend where I'm sure there was some serious anger vented out from the majority of us about just how bad things have become, just how this game against a managerless Southampton became that game where we can kind of scapegoat that match to show the severe cracks that have appeared in Chelsea since the new ownership really. But what one thing this new owners have done, which we can't really criticise, is in their approach to trying to change the running of Chelsea Football Club, they have gone out and appointed new members of staff behind the scenes. And one of those new members of staff goes by the name of Christopher Vivell. He is the technical director of Chelsea Football Club, something that we've not seen Chelsea behind the scenes. There have been so many different opinions about the way behind the scenes we were ran under the likes of, let's say, Marina Granovskaya under Abramovich. People were either super happy that she could absolutely drag a team into the ground to make sure Chelsea got their player but at the same time with a lack of vision and understanding about how we built the team we actually spent stupendous amounts of money more than what we spent on Eden Hazard on feeble footballers such as Bakayoko and Danny Drinkwater just to name a couple in the list that could go on for a couple of sides of A1 of players that probably should never have been signed by Chelsea Football Club so Christopher Vivelle led an emergency strategy meeting with Graham Potter and his staff on Tuesday to address how their season is unravelling after Todd Bowley and Badad Egbali offered their support. This emergency meeting, without me trying to give any of you people that want Graham Potter gone any kind of hope that you might get what you want, this is not to sack Graham Potter. What I believe this could well be is the acceptance meeting. The same way that we've accepted, or at least I have as fans, that this is potentially going to go on now for a while. Things aren't just going to randomly click into place. They might do, but it's just as likely that they won't. But at the same time, a sporting director, technical director at Chelsea Football Club, it is the role of a technical director, in my opinion, to be hands-on, not necessarily with coming in and offering coaching advice, because otherwise... You don't pay Graham Potter 12 million a year. You do the technical director's job and then you also manage the football team and coach the football team. But it is very important that everybody in the club is on board with what that strategy is going to be to drag Chelsea out of the mire and into the light again, like my face is in front of this camera right now with this giant microphone poking me in the eyes almost. But hopefully it sounds nice, at least, with Thiago Silva behind me. There are different ways that we can look into it. I do think there could be an element of the next three games could well be defining games for just how far Chelsea can take this season. We have got Tottenham away, which, let's be honest, this meeting could have involved a briefing with, you think it's bad now, you think there's enough people calling for your head now, if we lose to Tottenham at the weekend, just so you are aware if you're not smart enough to already, which I believe Potter would be, it is going to get a lot worse. If Chelsea get beaten by Tottenham at the weekend, and I want to transition this into a bit of pre-Spurs build-up towards the end of this video, but if we get beat by Spurs, can you imagine what the backlash is going to be like on social media? Let alone, depending on the nature of the victory, will depend on my tonality and my reactionary video. Overall, defeat to Spurs going into a Champions League all or nothing against Borussia Dortmund is catastrophic. It's bad enough at the best of times, even if Chelsea are in form. Not that we 
often lose to Spurs. We don't. We often do very well against Tottenham. But there's there's so much riding on this game for so many different reasons. So considering support has been given from the owners, those right at the top of this football pyramid at Chelsea, it is the role of the technical director to come in and be like, look, we can see everything here from a bird's eye perspective as well as an internal perspective walking around the corridors. We can see that there is still a good atmosphere around here, let alone the fact that those above you aren't really putting massive pressure on you to immediately fix this. That's coming from the fans. That's coming as well, I'd like to think, from the players who are absolutely desperate to turn this horrible run of form on its head and get Chelsea winning again. But at the same time, Chelsea is still fighting with the same problems here. And that is that we create chances, we don't score goals. We lose more football matches than we win, and we draw more football matches than we win, and we draw more football matches at the moment than we lose, or less matches drawn than we lose. So, at the moment, it is imperative that we can accept that things aren't currently good, but there is a level to where it can get to before executive decisions need to be made. So I think holding this meeting is the football club, Chelsea, not blindly going and backing a manager who has put us in at the moment, not necessarily all Potter's fault, but we are in this awful run under his management. So what this strategy meeting is, in my opinion, is the acceptance that right now it is as low as it can go. So best believe... In terms of the overarching stakeholders of Chelsea Football Club fans, we are going to be even more unhappy if we lose to Spurs. Then if we get knocked out by Dortmund, we're throwing the season in the bin. The season's thrown in the bin. Don't get a result against Spurs at the weekend. It's yet another match week where we look even further away from top four. So I do believe my conclusions from this is holding this meeting now in an attempt to galvanise everybody together in Chelsea's biggest week of their season, the biggest week under this new ownership so far, is the next seven days. It is now Thursday. We've got Tottenham away, Dortmund at home. You win both of those games, and all of a sudden, there is a bit more hope and genuine belief again, because that is two incredibly difficult fixtures that Chelsea have got. Yes, we have naturally done very well away at Spurs in their new stadium, but this game feels very different. I've never been so nervous in the way that I'm pretty sure we're going to lose. That is just generally the way I feel about it. But again, using the old phrase, it would be so Chelsea. The way we've been playing to go to Tottenham and get a result. As much as we've not really heard that it's like, you got three games, mate. Save yourself. Otherwise, pack your bags and get ready to leave. Everybody at the club now has got to a point of acceptance where we're looking at it and thinking, you know what? This can't get any worse because we're already at the worst point we can be in. So, strategy. Everybody come together. How do we fix this problem now, this is good, in my opinion. This is good ownership. It's They've given time. They've allowed, in the name of backing the man, that they have des decided it's the right man. They've given him the time. They've let it go on. Yeah, okay, it doesn't work for us fans. We're not getting results. But internally, they've let it get to a point where everything's being gauged. You know, you've got people trying to rationalise why Chelsea are doing all right because XG's high. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to just totally disregard this new footballing metric that's being used to describe the way that teams attack but at the same time it cannot get any worse than this please and I think that is pretty much the way the conversation would have gone I think because Chelsea have got so many new backroom staff members right now there is going to be a lot of different voices coming in from different angles when we hear about this meeting so far it is positive for us in the sense that I think Graham Potter is going to be allowed to be the coach to be the man, to influence these players. If that doesn't work, I think the club know that it's time to go. So that's the where, that's where we're at now. It's Thursday. We play Spurs on Sunday. I think it's good. I think at the moment, like day by day that goes by, we're just judging the mood around Chelsea and it's not really improving. Yes, you lose that anger that you feel straight after a defeat and then you get a bit more excited again going into Tottenham which is where I want to end this video here. I'm not going to end it now. I want to talk about Spurs because this game really does have the feeling that with all of these flash, shiny new toys that Chelsea have got at the club, with all of these great footballers individually, 
if somehow Graham Potter can pull these guys together to get a result here away at Spurs, I think a draw, we're kind of just simmering. And then we go to Dortmund, and if we win that, we can move with that. We can be happy with this. It can change the mood of the fans very quickly. If you lose to Spurs, it's only getting worse. And the Dortmund game looks like an almost throwaway, even though it can't be, because we're only 1-0 down and we did create chances. But you win against Tottenham, and all of a sudden there is belief in these players who are still connected together. They're not falling out with one another. We're here and it's good. The atmosphere is good. You beat Spurs, and all of a sudden, a game of this magnitude for Chelsea, not just contextually for the amount of points you get in the league and trying to chase the top four dream. It's, I think it's less about that, this game. It's more about realising how good we could be, could be done in this one game away at Spurs. So I hope that everyone is together. I hope this meeting was a positive one so that everyone is looking towards the same thing. Is it a three-game, this is it, do or die? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I think... It's maybe like, from, I don't necessarily think he'll be sacked if these three games don't go very well because I think they've made it imperatively clear they're backing him. But this match against Spurs is so big. I hope you guys are looking forward to it in some way. I'm looking forward to it pensively, I guess is the word. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this meeting in the comments down below. There may well be another video later on today. And if you haven't seen yesterday's videos... There was Chelsea news with some Pochettino stories and some transfers and then the 45-minute blockbuster with Eunice Talks Football with the tier list of Graham Potter's 23-24 season squad. It's a banger and it's the first of many collabs here on this channel, on Eunice's channel and maybe another one. Who knows? Gonna have to stay tuned, aren't you? But anyway, come on you blues.